Brother Sterling. How you doing, Rev? We're hanging in here, man. How are you doing? Living my best life. Wait, I got to get the, try to get my screen nice and clean there. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Living my best life. Yes, well, I'm sir. I'm glad, glad we've had the opportunity to, to see each other because with the, uh, the quarantine, we haven't seen each other physically in a while. It's been a minute, but you look good. I see you. I see you every week and you look good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying well, to represent. Trying yes, to represent sir. the spirit of the most high, you know? Amen. So back up, back up a little bit so my head is not cut off. <laughs> we'll give people a, a couple of moments to, to, to tune in with us. But I just, you know, I think we, we want to have a conversation about, first of all, you, how this whole situation is affecting you and your family and how you're moving through it and any lessons that you've learned during this particular time and okay. anything that you're going to take with you when we leave this quarantine situation. So we're going to have that kind of conversation. Then, you know, I was really moved by your Facebook uh, around Ahmad Aubrey. And that, that touched me and touched a lot of people. And of course, we were all suffering with that particular murder as an extension of many murders that have happened yeah. in, our, in our country. So we just want to just talk about a few things and um, inform, lift some spirits, and, um, you know, to see what, just see what emerges, you know? It works for me. It works for me. It was, you know, it's so interesting because I, uh, I went from my job and uh, <clears throat> sometimes I use this, this uh, oxygen, uh, you know, altitude training mask to sort of get my heart and lungs right, working hard. Right. And uh, I said, now today's the time to wear the mask. Not only will I be sort of being respectful and, and social distancing and whatnot, but it'll also sort of help me in terms of my own fitness. And uh, as I was running with it, I was like, man, I normally run with the mask for like a half a mile, a quarter, and take it off. And then I'm like, do, 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 do. I can just take off flying, but I, I kept it on the whole run. And it was a, a heavy run, but a necessary run because when I first saw that video, it, you, I, somebody right. sent it to me out of context. And you're like, well, what, what happened? Why did this young man, like somebody tell me what's going on here? Cause he couldn't really quite understand what you were seeing. Um, Cause it wasn't like he was running from something. He was just, jogging you know jogging. Um, he was just jogging and it just sort of poured out of me like I, I don't post that often and uh, I never post with an intention to be an authority on anything it was just something that was on my heart and I put it out there and I even said I had no intention of leaving it up there but phone is slipping I'm sorry um, and then a friend of mine saw it live and he said, you know what, you should actually leave that up there. I think a lot of people will respond to it. And I said, so be it. Yeah, well, it, it touched a lot of people and people are still asking me, have you seen Sterling's video? And I said, yes, I have. You know, I, I broke into tears the same time you did. It was just, uh, it was very moving. And I think it was a good, um, you allowed a lot of people to just cleanse the emotions sure. that were very deep within us all and that we've been holding for a long time for a lot of things. Yes, sir. You know, and, and it brought up, I can remember when I was in high school and I was on the track team and I can remember I would jog around my neighborhood all the time and I'd be stopped by the police and they would say, what are you doing? I said, I have my sweatsuit on. I said, I'm running, I'm jogging, you know, and, and I remember my mother would, uh, part of my mother's training she would make me go to the police department and file a complaint, you know, and, and she trained us. And I'd say, mom, they stop me all the time, whatever. And she would say, Michael, we're going down to the police department. Do you remember the guy's badge number? Yes, I do, mom, you taught me how to do that, you know. And we would file a complaint. And she said, the reason we're doing this is because I want you to have your own authority inside of you. But I also, it's something called building a case. That if yes. a certain police officer uh, uh, gets a complaint over and over again, then if something monumental happens, you can see a trend, you know. Yes. So that, so, so uh, Ahmad's experience reminded me of my mom right. and the training. And then I realized this week I'm going to have to go over to my son's house and have a conversation with my grandchildren, <laughs> you know. Right. The, the talk, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just sure. To make sure, just make sure they're up on, on, on survival skills. 
It is such and, an uh, interesting... Here we are in 2020, yeah. and we still have to have a certain level of survival skills where people of color are concerned. And so uh, I, I, I appreciate that you put, you put it up there. I appreciate that you left it up there. And it's, it's, um, it's a part of the conversation. You know, it's a part right. of the conversation that obviously needs to be had. And uh, beyond, of course, we want justice. Of course, we want, um, you know, justice to prevail in this particular case. But even beyond that, something that I said on Sunday was, um, you know, we have, to, we have to change the narrative. The laws can change. Right. Unless the underlying narrative that we're all spiritual beings, we all have a human incarnation, no one is valued more than another, regardless of your sexual orientation, the color of your skin, your nationality, what language you speak, what religion you come from, unless that truly gets embedded. Right. You can pass every law you want to pass, and I appreciate the laws. Sure. But still things like that are going to happen. You know. I mean, it, when when we operate under the uh, the fallacy of separation, right? When we see ourselves as separate and distinct from one another, and not all emanating from the one source, being a part of God, then then you find there's this competition that happens, and we have to jockey for power, and you have to subjugate one group in order to maintain your own authority or whatnot, but. We're really all in this together. And the sooner that we have an understanding of that, that's not just intellectual, but like really experiential, these sorts of things shall continue. Absolutely. We have to, this is why spiritual practice is so important because it takes what you believe and you start to embody it. You can't, you just, we can't just believe something. We have to actually, as you say, have a direct experience of it. And that happens through spiritual practice of some level, some prayer, some meditation, some visioning, something. Yes. And we get to own our belief and then live it even when it's tough. You know, even when it's even when it's tough. Now, as I was saying in the beginning, obviously we were all to some level or degree affected by this COVID nineteen quarantining. How how are you and your family dealing with this? <clears throat> we're doing okay. We're taking it one day at a time. With um, it's been a very interesting experience. In the beginning, um, you know, everybody's in close quarters and and not accustomed to be being up underneath each other all the time. So there's some growing pains in that. But then you have to sort of shift perspective and recognize that this isn't. There is an opportunity. Like in the midst of, of the pandemic, there's an opportunity to connect. There's a, an opportunity to be, um, to have undivided attention uh, on spirit, right? So there's been wonderful opportunity for meditation. You don't even recognize how busy life is until you have an opportunity to be forced still. You're like, oh. Like, I don't have to do that. And in your mind, you never really had to do this and had to do that. But you think that you do. And then you realize all of that is taken away. And there's, there's space to breathe. And there's space, space to be still and know that God is real, right? And so yeah. there's some really wonderful things that have taken place. My wife and I have been much more dedicated to our spiritual practice, waking up in the morning uh, with meditation. I started reading a book by a man by the name of Dan Millman. You know Dan Millman? Yeah, I know Dan very well. He's spoken at Agape a few times over the years. Yes. And which one, which one are you reading? I, wait, I'll bring it out. I'm reading The Warrior Athlete. Yeah, OK. I know you like that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, Dan it's Millman was a great, he, he was a great gymnast. He was a great gymnast yeah. and had a spiritual awakening. Yeah. That's right. He went, he went to the competition known as Cal Berkeley, me being the Stanford man that I am. But it's all Pac-12 love now. Um, <laughs> so I'm enjoying that. I, uh, I bought a Peloton bike because I can't go to the gym and do things that I normally do. So that's been really wonderful. Um, and then just like the homeschooling started off as a chore, recognizing the opportunity in that. Like just watching and being up close and personal with my children's learnings. There's things that I like about it. There's ways in which I can supplement it um, that are lovely. 
There's an ongoing debate that we have in our house because my son has a PS4 and he plays Fortnite. And if you have yeah. any words of wisdom on this game, Fortnite, Rev, it is no joke. Like the kids, <laughs> he will spend all day if I let him. So just trying to figure out the balance in that. Yeah, you have to, I guess you have to kind of give a, a, a reward when he does something other than that. You know what I mean? It's like, you can do this when you completed this yes so that so that the so that the game becomes a reward and not just a normal way of going in the world yeah. that's what we're going for we're trying to get him a, an hour of activity outside on a daily basis he has to read in spanish because he goes to a spanish language uh immersion school but the the thing about the fortnight is that he can play with his friends and i recognize yeah. this is one of the few ways in which he can connect and i'm like okay I, I, there's special allowances during this time so that you can still be a social animal because we all need, right? We need community, Absolutely. and that's how he gets it. So yeah, I, I did see the video of your wife dancing and singing, <laughs> <Instagram>. <laughs> and you 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 did a hashtag, uh, how we stay together or something like that. <laughs> yes. and she's just singing, amen, and dancing. And <laughs> she she was feeling so it. <laughs> That she was had sweet. I think D Nice was was jamming on the ones and twos, and she was feeling it. Oh no, she turned. She was listening. We were listening to theme songs from our childhood of TV show, uh, and so yeah. she turned on Amen. Amen. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I watched it. Tell her I watched it more than one time. <laughs> <laughs> I won't let her know. <laughs> but but that's because. In the midst of it, there's, there's so many things that you can be meditating on and you can be thinking about. The news is not positive by and large for the most part. So it's nice when you're able to find those times to actively choose what you want to think about. Like we, we have choice in what we think about and we chose joy. And so right. as long as you continue to choose joy, it can be a, a pleasant experience. Not that, you know, I wish a pandemic on anyone, I'm just trying to see what is it that God is giving me an opportunity to lift in myself, be it patience, be it joy, uh, whatever the quality is that this incubation period is giving me, trying to put my focus on that. Right. Well, you, you, you said a lot right there. Uh, you talked uh, about basically doing a reset on a daily basis. You talked about the fact that we're so distracted as a, as a, as a human species and we don't even know we're caught up in distraction right. until something like this happens. We realize, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of things to keep us from ourselves, not examining ourselves, our thoughts, our, our beliefs, our <laughs> habits, our priorities. And, and so what you've mentioned is that this is the opportunity where we, we have, we're kind of forced to be still and look at ourselves. Yes, sir. And so that's a very valuable lesson. Now, what do you think, you know, going forward, what do you think you're going to, what do you think you're going to take with you as we go forward? Now, we're not going to ever go back to normal. There's always going to be some shift, and we don't want to go back to normal. We don't want to go back to the status quo. We want people to have some kind of an examined life so that individually and collectively, we actually are about something different. Right. Uh, we, we, obviously, we've seen that the least vulnerable of us in our, on our, in our society and in the world are unprotected in terms of health care, just in terms of food, in terms of so much. The, the richest country in the world, uh, the, mo least, the least vulnerable are not taken care of. Yeah. You know, and so as you go forward, what do you think you're going to take with you? And what do you think you're going to leave behind that you're not going to take with you as we go forward? Those are really wonderful questions. Um... And I'm, as I'm asking you this question, I'm asking that as people are tuning in right now from all over the world watching us, I want everybody to ask that question. You know, what is it that we want to be about as we go forward? And what is it that we don't want to take with us? Through this forced examination, what do we don't want? You know, There's you know? something that I, I recognize. It's something that you talk about all the time. Uh, the difference between my day when I begin uh, with my spiritual practice versus when I don't, right? And I normally like to allow myself um, to, to meditate. Uh, I give myself different points of focus or what have you. And the day is so much more um, purposeful, 
uh, enjoyful. I just made that word up. But That's when, good. You like me. I think, <laughs> <laughs> you make up the word. If the language is too limited, make up your right. own word. Enjoyful. When, when, when I know, when I, when the mentality is that, like, how would I live in this world if I were God? And that doesn't mean from an ego sense, but, like, if I truly see myself as, as an emanation of the Most High, as that, that lightning, that beam of sunlight that emanates from the sun, and the beam and the sun are one, then how do I treat people? How, what is the effect that I want to be in the world? How am I raising vibrations, right? And, and the mindfulness, if you put it off, right, you can always re-engage into it. But when you start your day that way, like everything just feels like it, it just lines up, right? The coincidence of it all. Right. You can see it um, versus sort of stumbling into it. So I, I know that... I wish to begin my days with that, with that gift. I think it's the greatest gift that I can give to myself and to everyone whose sphere that I come into contact with, right? Absolutely. Um, and and you, you're describing an intentional life. Uh, yes. I say oftentimes that um, people have a, a, an, in, an intention deficit disorder. They, they, don't, they don't have an intention, so they just get caught up in the emotional contagion of the world because they haven't, they haven't established their own intention by the way you start your day. And so at the end of the day, they've gotten caught up in 20 people's agendas, but not their own, yes. and uh, uh, distractions. So what you just described is really aligning yourself with an intention that then, it then um, blocks thoughts that aren't in your intention, right. and it embraces thoughts and guidance that are, that are within your intention, and you're doing it all yourself. You're your you're, you're, you're <laughs> own authority. Yeah. Right, right. No, from, from a biblical standpoint, I think my mom would always quote, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So it's just so like, yeah, I get it. Like, you know, that's how you should start your day. Um, mom. <laughs> she's a good mom. She's a good mom. Um, in terms of things to leave behind, uh, reactiveness, right? Uh -huh. um, I recognize... <clears throat> So when you don't start with that sort of intentionality and stimuli uh, come your way, and instead of having a purposeful response to them, you just react. Um, it's not, it's not uh, intentional. It's sort of just like, I, I look at our, our commander in chief as a very reactive human being. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like somebody says something and without pause, without thought without consideration, he, he goes back at them. Instead of taking that breath to be like, what is it that, how is it that I choose to respond in this particular moment? So I, I love the times in which I'm able to focus and with my children in the house and having tough times of homeschooling and, and frustration. It's like, if I react in a way that is in line with their energy, that energy just builds until an explosion, right? If I respond with love, right? Because that's the only thing that's eternal, everlasting, not going anywhere. If I respond with love, his energy dissipates and we're able to create a new playing field where what turmoil was can't, can't exist. It, right, it right. can't exist. Right. So that's the those, goal. Those, those are really good. Those, yeah, you're, you're, we're vibrational beings. And so once you shift your vibration, uh, however it is that you choose to shift it, they have to respond to you differently as well. Sure. And, uh, and, and we all have that kind of inner authority. It's very powerful. Now, just segue a little bit, you know, uh, what can we look forward to next season on This Is Us? Oh, man. <laughs> you, guys, you guys went way out emotionally this past year. <laughs> it, was, it was an intense season. Um, it, and a lot of it actually was inspired by, by things going on in, in my household. My, my mom is, um, is, is dealing with a health issue, and she likes to keep it very private, but she's dealing with a health issue. And it's very interesting to see how her children react, right? Uh, and we all want what's best for her, but the way in which that best thing manifests itself has very different prisms through which it goes. Right. So 
I would talk to Dan and the writers about conversations between my brother and I and how we have argued about what's the best thing to do for mom. And we sort of just put it into the show. Um, wow. and, yeah, it's been very interesting. And then in terms of next year, I was just speaking to Dan. He's still trying to consider whether or not he wants to address COVID-19 in the season or have it be an alternate reality outside of the pandemic. Um, and I think he's leaning towards addressing the pandemic because our show, even in its title, like this is uh, sort of has a way of like, he wants to be able to show that like, I don't know, if the Pearsons are going through these things, Randall is someone who, who lives with anxiety and whatnot. Like it is, Randall and I, so I always make a point. This is an, a great opportunity. Randall and I are very different people. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but you're, I, you're a great actor. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Because a couple of times in the last series, a couple of times, I didn't like you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And I've always liked you. I, said, I don't like him. And it's my boy. <laughs> you are not alone, okay? The brown brown got a lot of heat. And I was like, hey guys, I'm Sterling. Don't forget. Please, please, please. But but I have a an, an understanding. I have people in my family who, who live with anxiety, who live with bipolar disorder, who live with schizophrenia. And so being able to to bring an individual who's a functioning member of society who has uh, a mental ailment um, is, is important because a lot of people, like one out of five, I think, Americans lives with something. And to see themselves on screen, recognizing that there is a life that can be had that is full and promising with, with children and loved ones is important to show. So to show him navigating COVID-19 in this pandemic, I think is a really interesting and wonderful experience to share with the world. So we'll That's see. beautiful. And, you know, we, we're in Mental Health Week as well. Yes. And, and a lot of the things that you were covering are, uh, are giving people permission to really seek help. Yes. You know, we have over 200 spiritual practitioners here at Agape. And we have a online crisis support and counseling and prayer ministry. And people are using it at this time. It's really, it's really robust. And so we want people to know that it, it, it's, it's a strength to be able to ask for help. Amen. If, if there's fear, if there's anxiety, there's worry, doubting, fretting, you don't have to hold that in, you know. No. You, you ask for help. And there are a lot of places that are available that can assist. You know, su the suicide rate ha ha is risen, of course. And we want people to know that there are places that can help, that can assist, that can listen to you without judgment and, and assist you back to a center. So I think that when a, a, a show such as like yours deals with that and actually gives people permission, and they, like, like you said, they see themselves on television, right. and then they see themselves having conversations, working it out, talking to people. It really does a lot. It's the right use of technology. Yes. And uh, so on this um, Mental Health Week, you know, just thank you for all you do. Uh, Thanks. The way you slip that in there and, you know, just, just who you are. And, and I really appreciate, you know, for me, you know, as I, as I go forward, I'm really looking at, you know, how we can be more available to the less, uh, to the most vulnerable in our society. That's, it's, it's on my mind a lot, yeah. you know. And, and the other thing that, that I'm not, that I'm not going to take with me, you know, I, have a, I live with a very big yes. It's been yes. You know, it's a sacred yes. It's a divine yes. Uh, if something comes at me, you know, I'm going to see if I can participate on some level. But I've come to realize I've got to, my no has to be a little bit stronger right now in order for me to keep doing what I'm doing excellently. Yeah. So I'm just aware of, I mean, I'm not, my yes is not going away. Sure. But my, but my no is becoming a little bit stronger so I can say, you know what? I can't do that right now. Because right. if I do that right now, then these three things are going to suffer, and I don't want them to suffer. Right. You know, I want everything to be excellent. So yeah. my yes is still high, but I'm, but, I'm, but I'm navigating where I need to say no. Because I'm like, if you say, you, you, struggle, you call me and say, hey, can you? I'm, yeah, I'll help you. Yeah, I'll do it. But then I may, I may blow something over here. Yes. So I'm learning that. I'm getting the feedback from my staff, too, you know. <laughs> I'm with you. 
Yeah. So There's anyway, so, yes. so when, when, when this situation, let me just say, when this situation is over, it's not going to be over. Right. Hopefully, we're all changed. Like, we take this crisis as an opportunity to really change, to go deeper, to examine ourselves, to, uh, you know, to set some priorities of how we're going to be. And as you d described, once you establish your day and your, your intention, energy will flow in that direction. But if you don't establish an intention, there's no energy flowing anyway. Right. And, and you just find it's yourself easy. a victim to circumstances. Exactly. It's easy yeah. to just kind of blow with the wind instead of having your North Star guide you where you want to be on the tip. Like you can just be, yeah, I'm good. Absolutely. And I'll just say um, one other thing, just for people that, if you're in worry, you're in doubt, you're in fear, those things, you know, don't beat yourself up about that. You know, people are going up and down in those emotional frequencies. But yes. here's a little, um, a little tip. If you stop and you think about somebody that you love, it, they can be on this side of the veil or they can have passed over. It doesn't matter. Friend, family, associate, mom, dad. You just think about how much you love them. Immediately, it is difficult to be in love and in fear at the same time. And it, it, immediately, your body will begin to produce a cascade of oxytocin, which is the love chemical. There'll be a level of coherence of the brain People, you'll be very much more available for wisdom and guidance and, and make, taking right action in your life. You just pull yourself out of the fear. Think about anyone else. It could be your kid, your child, your wife, your husband, whatever. And your body chemistry will change and you'll be pivoted into a new direction. So we know there's a lot of anxiety running rapid. As you mentioned, Sterling, the news carries the lowest common denominator of the human experience. Uh, and there's so much good happening, but so many insights, so much compassion. People are buying groceries for each other. People are doing things for each other. We don't hear that news. Sure. We're hearing the fear news. So this is a, it's a, sweet, a sweet tip on how people can um, just come back to themselves. And secondly, Sterling, have you, have you downloaded my app yet? I have not downloaded it <laughs> do, do you know about it? I, I heard you talk about it at church. Now, tell right. you what I'm getting so listen, so I know. I'm going to take this opportunity to say, go to michaelbbeckwith.tv. Okay. Download it. Then go to the App Store and download um, MBB, Beckwith Inspires. And uh, so we're, we're offering that uh, at this time, particularly when people are cloistered. We're going to put something in there every week for inspiration, for uh, education, transformation, prayer. So... Everyone, if you're listening, go ahead and, and get the app. And uh, just another offer. I'm on it. I'm on it. Any, really any, any last words? I don't want to keep you all day, even though we can talk all day and all night. You know what, Rev? God is good. I, I'm so thankful to, to what you and the Agape Ministry have been doing, like continuing business as usual. Like the spirit is, is present. Like it's, it's quiet inside of the house, but you can hear. I hope you can hear my wife and I shouting and singing along and we get up and when you put on the music for the dance i'll have to record us i'll have to record us and send a picture in because we grew we grew uh when 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 bill passed away and all yeah. the music that you played of his it was just a, a bomb for the soul and uh, i'm thankful I'm, I'm thankful to be a part of the agape family i'm thankful to have you for a friend and a spiritual teacher and uh, thank you for allowing us all to make it through this uh, and elevating our grace. So thank you. Hey, thank you for everything you're doing. And, uh, you know, I gave my staff two days to go fully online. Yeah. And most of the ministries did it. And now we have uh, preteens and teens and the young people online in the afternoon. So if you want a little homeschooling for your kids, you know, you, you can leave Reverend Leon is, 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 is doing it for, for the younger people and the preteens as well. So, so thank you for that. And uh, I'll let you get back to your day. Uh, give your, your wife a big hug for me. She, she's wonderful. You know, and let her know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call her to have a conversation with her as, as well. Give your kids my love. And uh, we'll talk soon. God bless, Rev. Talk to you have, soon. Have a bright day. You too. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe.
and I'll see you there.